the main problem related to the HPLC analysis of basic and or amphoteric compounds uh, by using silica based absorbents is concerned with the formation of strong undesirable interaction between basic chemical groups of the solutes and synonal groups of the stationary phase. This affects the mechanism of uh, retention, separation selectivity and result in the deterioration of the resolution. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I have helped many pharma professionals to boost their career growth by providing absolute clarity on various topics and also by helping them on to get new untapped opportunities uh, into their field. In this video, we will discuss about uh, what is free silanols, the definition of the free silanols. Second important point that we'll talk is what are the effects due to free silanols. The third point, which factors actually accelerates the effect of free silanol groups. And the last, we will talk about how to reduce the silanol activity. I hope you will find the discussion helpful. So let us begin. So let us start with the first question. What is meant by free silanol? And here is the definition of the free silanol. So the underivitized surface silanol groups during stationary phase synthesis are called as the free silanol groups. So why this uh, silanol groups uh, remains underivitized? It is because of the steric hindrance during the process. Because of the steric hindrance between the silica base and the bonded phase like C8 or C18, some silica, some silanol groups, means SiOH groups, uh, gets bonded with the stationary phase, but some of them get missed out of the steric hindrance from the bonded silica, uh, bonded stationary phase like C8 or C18. So free silanols interact with uh, polar and or ionic compounds, maybe by ion exchange process or because of the hydrogen bonding depending on to the solute and the analysis condition. So you can understand that what are the two prominent interaction with the solute. It is called as the ion exchange interaction and the second interaction can be the hydrogen bonding. So we will also try to understand in what conditions the ion exchange interaction is possible and at what condition the hydrogen bonding interaction is possible. So, the silanol activity at low pH, in case if your pH is less than 3, it is actually dominated by the hydrogen bonding formation. So, below at low pH like less than 3, the silanol group will remain unionized. Remain unionized, but still there is a presence of hydrogen onto the silanol SiOH. Now this H or hydrogen present onto the silanol group can form the hydrogen bonding with the basic analyte. And hence, at the lower pH, the silanol groups can interact with the analyte due to the hydrogen bond formation. So you may be having question into your mind that you know why silica or why silanol group doesn't undergo ionization at lower pH. Let us try to understand this also. See, so if you look at the type B silica, which is mostly used for column manufacturing in today's time, having the pKa value of around 5. And we know that the silanol groups are acidic in the nature. So any substance which is acidic in the nature and having pKa value around 5. If you look at the henderson hasselbach equation, you can calculate the percent ionization possible at the different pH. So if the pKa is 5 and pH is 5, the 50% ionization take place. So you can understand that at pH 5, the 50% silanol groups will be under ionization or ionized. The moment you adjust the pH of mobile phase equal to pKa minus 2, so in our case it is going to become 3 or less than 3, almost the silanol groups will remain 
under ionization sorry the selenol groups will remain unionized and hence i said that at the lower ph there will be no ionization possible and hence if there is no ionization the ion exchange will not take place ion exchange will not take place in case if there is no ionic groups available on to the stationary phase but uh, still there is a presence of hydrogen now sioh and because of that hydrogen in case if there is any amine or uh, basic uh, analyte or basic functional groups present on to the analyte that can form the hydrogen bond so at the lower ph less than let us say 3 the hydrogen bond becomes the prominent interaction with the analyte but in case if uh, we have the ph around 7 so what happens at the ph 7 or higher ph now this is the acidic group our selenol group is what it is acidic in the nature the pk of the group is around 5 so the moment if you use the henderson hasselbach equation to calculate the percent ionization you can easily understand that almost uh, all selenol functional groups can undergo ionization almost 100 percent ionization can happen at the ph equal to pka plus 2 and pka is 5 and 5 plus 2 become around 7 so in case if you have the mobile phase ph around 7 you can expect that the 100 percent selenol groups present onto the stationary phase will be into ionization state now in that state the ion exchange can take place very easily now the selenol groups will be having the negative charge like sio minus so in case if there are any positively charged bodies like uh, protonated base bh plus so the ion oppositely charged ions attracts each other and because of that this ion exchange process happens and leads to the retention of this protonated basic compounds so now this is the two these are the two different ways how the selenol actually interacts with the compounds so i hope you understand what is mean of free selenol and what are the basic uh, uh, reactions that take place during the selenol effect let us now understand in case if there is a selenol effect in the place what effects it's produced during the chromatographic run what are the effects due to free selenol the very first effect because of the free selenol it can increase the retention time and the peak tailing of the ionized base because we know that the in case if uh, the basic compound is into ionic state provided our selenol also, also undergoes ionization then the retention time can get increased because of the ion exchange process but the another drawback is you know what as there is the primary interaction because of the non-polar stationary phase which is ca or c18 the selenol effect bring the secondary interaction which is now ion exchange and because of this secondary interaction the degree of interaction will be little low which result into the peak tailing so though we can expect the increase in retention time which sometimes can be good for you but the negative impact is you know what your peak may have the bigger tailing because of the secondary selenol interaction also free selenol can result in irregular retention time irreversible adsorption and sometimes loss of efficiency for the polar compounds now these are the prominent effects because of the selenol effect now let us also understand the third important point is which factors really accelerates the free selenol effect we understand what are the effects of the free selenols but how to understand which chromatographic factors really accelerate or increase or enhance the selenol effect you can also call them as a contributing factor so the bonded ligand with low surface coverage increases effective polar adsorptive free selenols see we have the ligand like c8 or c18 which is bonded onto the silica based surface so if you have the low surface coverage 
means what there are low amount of uh, ligand bonded onto the silica but silica has many silanol groups available still there so the low is the surface coverage greater will be the available pre silanols and the higher is the surface coverage means if the uh, carbon load you can say in another term if it is higher then the, the silanol free silanol groups will be minimum that is the purpose of this first point the second point the silanol interactions may enhance by the presence of metal impurities in the silica support so this just acts like a catalyst and in presence of uh, metal impurities like iron or aluminium the silanol effect gets further enhanced the third important point silanol interactions are generally stronger when the mobile phase contains astonitrile because the astonitrile does not form a hydrogen bond with silanols thereby making them available for the interaction see the another way of blocking the silanol is what by using the organic modifiers which can form the hydrogen bond with the silanol like uh, i will explain in the further example in the further point but does the acn form the hydrogen bond so the answer is no and if the acn organic solvent does not form hydrogen bond it cannot really block the silanols and if the silanols doesn't get blocked because of the acn now they remains available for the uh, alkaline compounds and because of that you can have the more silanol effect so you can understand that in presence of acn your silanol effects can get increased but the good news is in case if you use the methanol as your mobile phase uh, then you are going to have the certainly weaker silanol interactions with the analyte now how the methanol reduces the silanol effect and here is the explanation because methanol forms the hydrogen bond with silanols whereby reducing the available free silanols so whatever silanol are available onto the column maybe some of them can form the hydrogen bond with the methanol which is part of our mobile phase and the little amount of uh, silanols will be available for the interaction with the analyte so that way you can understand that the presence of methanol helps us in reducing the silanol effect so the next important point is how to reduce silanol activity and i think you can make some of them but let me allow you to explain the first point and the first point is you know what the usage of type b silica for manufacturing of your bonded silica columns so in case if you are using the c8 or c18 column use the type b silica because type b silica is less acidic it is having the pka of around 5 to 6 and because of that it has the little ionization possible in the lower ph exhaustively end capped stationary phase can also help you in reducing the silanol activity because the end capping is nothing but you are going to add smaller functional groups like trimethyl silane etc now those trimethyl silane functional groups are going to bond with the silanol groups and hence they will not be available to interact with our analyte the third point that you can use to avoid the silanol activity is the stationary phase synthesized from a silanizing edge reagent with bulky groups on the silicon atom resulting in sterically protected surface because there will be less scope for silanol analyte interaction see because the steric hindrance will not allow your analyte to reach to the available silanol groups and if the analyte will not reach to the silanol groups how this silanol interaction is going to be possible and that's where the bulky uh, groups present onto your c18 c8 ring like phenyl uh, groups can certainly help in reducing the secondary silanol effect 
The mobile phase can be modified to reduce the adsorption of bases by reducing the pH of the mobile phase with trifluoroacetic acid. Because at the very low pH, like pH 2, 2.5 or below 3, our selenol groups remain unionized. And if they remain unionized, the ion exchange interaction will not take place. So in case if your compound is getting uh, interacted with the ion exchange properties, you can certainly use trifluoroacetic acid. You can use the lower pH to avoid the secondary selenol uh, interaction. The fifth point, the mobile phase with acidic pH having selenol blocking agents such as triethylamine in the concentration of 30 to 50 millimole per liter, dimethyl octylamine in the concentration range of 5 to 10 millimole per liter or maybe tetramethyl ammonium phosphate or tetrabutyl ammonium bisulfate can be used to block these selenol groups. See in the acidic pH, let us say you have the selenol groups which are still in the ionization state. SiO- is available. So rather than uh, giving a scope for ion exchange with the analyte, can you add some competitive bases like amines into the mobile phase? Now these amines present into the mobile phase are going to compete with your analyte. And if your analyte is weaker and if these amines are very very strong, amines are having a very strong affinity towards the selenol groups, then this amine will get exchanged with the selenols rather than the analyte getting exchanged with the selenols. So with this, these amines groups will block the selenol analyte interaction. The next one, where quaternary amines are used, the element can be at any pH. Although a slightly acidic element would be recommended to minimize the number of ionized selenols. See the quaternary amines uh, are very strong uh, alkalis and because of that probably it may not need the acidic environment to remain into the ionization state. But again the advice is what still you can maintain the acidic pH. And if you want to understand the selenol blocking uh, properties of these alkyl amines, the primary amines are weak in blocking the selenol uh, properties, then the secondary, tertiary and the quaternary. So you can think of at least tertiary amines as a selenol blocking agent. The use of methanol rather than acetonitrile for mobile phase preparation can certainly block the selenols due to the formation of hydrogen bond. So we discussed this point in a few of the earlier slides that the methanol forms the hydrogen bond with selenol and hence some of the selenols group may get blocked because of the presence of methanol. So I hope you must have found the presentation useful. So please keep watching and keep learning. Thank you so much.